Welcome to part three of the clay pin tutorial series. You can take out that Sculpey clay because we're about to start shaping our pins. If you do not have Sculpey clay, I wanted to give you guys the opportunity to make clay at home. So I've linked a video to making paper clay below to make this more accessible for you in quarantine. However, if you are using Sculpey clay, when you take the clay out of the box, it is in these rows of thin lines Kind of pressed together so you can peel back those layers and easily mold them with your hands to get them to be smoother. Start by taking a good chunk of that clay and start molding it with your hands. Just round it out so it doesn't have any of those bumps anymore. You can kind of roll it into a little clump and then you're going to take that roller tool that I introduced in an earlier video and start rolling it out. Know that the clay tends to stick to the roller at first try but then you can just peel that layer back and re-flatten it on to a surface and then you should be able to roll it to a thinner size. I don't have an exact measurement but I wanted to show you the thinness of the clay when I roll it out. It's about a fourth an inch thick. The thinner the better because when they're thicker they tend to be heavier and they may not bake all the way through when you put them in the oven. So try to get them pretty thin when you roll it out. Once you have a rolled out slab of clay, go ahead and grab one of those drawings we made in the last video and place it right on top. We're going to be using those cutouts as a template for our pins, so you can go ahead and grab one of those tools, a knife tool, or you can use, again, a household item. Anything that would cut through this clay really works, so you're going to go ahead and trace that shape right on the clay with the knife tool to form that outline shape for your pin. Once you're done cutting out that outline shape of your pin, you can go ahead and peel the excess clay off and re-roll it for use for another pin. Now you have your first pin shape, which is exciting. And you can go ahead and smooth out some of those edges just with your finger, because sometimes when you cut it, they tend to be a little rougher. I like my edges to be kind of rounded. So you can easily just mold this clay with your hands just by kind of pressing in those sharper corners and smoothing them out. I realized that my paint palette in real life has a thumb hole for me to hold it, so I thought maybe I would try to cut that shape out of my pin design as well. But this is not something I would recommend. This was my first time trying it, and it was actually really difficult, and I had trouble smoothing out those inside edges. Of course, you can do whatever you would like. You can go right ahead, but just know that it is sort of tricky to get that shape to be smooth. Another thing to keep in mind is if you have any shapes that are kind of thin, like that line, right under the thumb hole that I'll show you right here. If it ends up too thin when you put it into the oven, it might actually burn, which can be problematic for the final result of your pin. So just be aware, try not to make anything too thin when it comes to your clay designs. So now that you know the process, go ahead and roll out some more clay and do the same with your other pin designs. Keep in mind that you don't only need to cut one pin at a time, you can actually roll a larger slab of clay out and cut more than one pin if you would like. I will be doing that with the next two so you can see that.
When it comes to my plant design, this was definitely the trickiest to work with. There were a lot of small lines to be cutting out and I had trouble smoothing these things down. So just keep in mind that it will be easier for you if your outline shapes are smoother and rounder rather than having a lot of jagged edges. So you guys can see that this plant came out pretty rugged and it was harder to smooth out because of all the small details. So again, just keep these things in mind. It's a lot easier if you have less details and a simpler outline shape rather than having to smooth down all these little parts. But again, if you want a challenge and you think it would be more interesting to you or true to your item to have smaller details, go right ahead. I just wanted you guys to keep in mind you can always cut out round shapes and do intricate paintings instead of an outlining shape. Once your shapes are all cut out, you're ready to bake them in the oven. The box should have instructions on how to bake it. Sculpey bakes at 275 for 15 minutes. Preheat your oven to the instructed temperature. Grab a baking tray. To prevent the clay from sticking to the baking sheet, I recommend putting parchment paper down and then go ahead and lay out those pins. As instructed, you're going to leave those in the oven for 15 minutes. Make sure to be washing your hands after this. Especially during the quarantine, you should be washing your hands all the time anyways. Once you have baked your pins for 15 minutes, take them out of the oven, turn the oven off, and let them cool for at least an hour. I actually wait until the next day to make sure that they're definitely dry before I paint on them. While you're waiting for your clay to bake or dry, this is a great opportunity for you to plan out that color palette of yours. If you already have that done, that's great, you're ahead of the game, but if not, this is a great chance for you to think about what colors you'll be applying to your final pins.